So, the big question. How much did the Mega Mama kitchen cost, Jamarelle? Well, Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code LFTABLE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Oh, hi there. We're going to do a big Q&A video today, but I got a lot of other stuff I have to do. So I can't just uh, sit and Q&A it. Okay, we, we, we've got things. We've got things happening. So, but wait, there's more. Uh, the questions we are getting to are what happened to the refrigerators and freezers? What are we doing with the baby kitchen? How much did the new Mega Mama kitchen cost? Uh, so much. I think I've got like 200 questions. So we're going to get to all of that. But remember when I exploded those tomatoes? You, you're following, right? I exploded the tomatoes. This is several videos back, but if you know, you know. And I wasn't sure how I was going to clean my freeze dryer. Well, I learned how to clean my freeze dryer. I've cleaned it since then. And I came downstairs because I have some soup I wanted to freeze dry. Looked in my freeze dryer, my trays. I, I want to clean out the inside again. Uh, I've used it several times since the tomatoes. What did I do? I went somewhere. I defrosted it before I left on a trip recently. I don't even know. It was on defrost. It was, for whatever reason, a couple days. So I've used the freeze dryer a whole lot since the tomato situation but I wanted to go ahead and wipe it out again today. This isn't something you have to do regularly, but it is easy to do. And I thought, I wanna wipe this down again today. And I didn't show you all how I took it apart to clean it last time. So since we now know how to do this, let me just real quick in this Q and A video, let's learn how to clean it to, to uh, take out this. So anyway, I took the seal off already. That's what goes along here. It just pulls right out, and then it unhooks. There it goes. That wire unhooks from the back. And now I'll be able to wipe off those shelves. You can also clean out the inside of the freeze dryer. I have some microfiber cloths that I use for it. Um, there's those little uh, appropriate little size sponges that you can get for washing dishes and such. Um, and I do have one of those, but it's upstairs and I'm down here now. So I'm just going to wipe it down with my cloth. But now on with the Q&A video. Okay, okay. Alrighty, so it looks like we have six pans here. This is stuffed peppered soup, and it's a lot thicker. It's been in the refrigerators. I had, um, this one was three quarters of the way full, and this one was about a quarter of the way full. I made, obviously, a big pot of stuffed pepper soup, and then we had two days. So the first day we ate it a bunch, um, and then the next day I took Naomi to see Hamilton for her 16th birthday, and then yesterday we also had more birthday stuff. So anyway, the soup has just, uh, bad timing on mom making a big pot of soup. I'll Although we did have this also today for lunch. Um, so anyway, perfect example of how wonderful this freeze dryer is. This is just going to go. I'm going to pre-freeze it in the freezer. 
and then tomorrow afternoon at some point I will throw these in the freeze dryer and they will run through. And I actually have a trip coming up um, here next week that I'm taking two older teens on and I was thinking you know what to make it super easy I could take some freeze-dried soup just another like hotel in hotel room option so I think we're gonna try that just to kind of do like our own little soup cups I don't know let's see how it goes but anyway gonna get these in the freezer now and uh, get back upstairs and we'll do the next thing which is potting plants. Yes, I'm gonna work on repotting. I know you wanna hear, you wanna hear about the plants I got on sale at Walmart. $2 house plants, okay? But we need to repot them. And Q&A time, yay. jumping right on into questions and I don't have a question to read right now but I can paraphrase it. <laughs> Jay Morrell, where did you put all the refrigerators and freezers that were on your front porch and then you also if you're new here might be wondering whoo didn't drop my thumb uh, might be wondering Jay Morrell why did you end up with all those freezers and refrigerators on your front porch so and then there's also the question of Jay Morrell why do you have so many refrigerators and freezers? So I feel like I've really got to answer this question in stages, okay? So for many, many years at our farmhouse, okay, back in the olden days, I had one extra refrigerator. That was, okay, can show you a preview already. That, oops, 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 that refrigerator right there. Already see the rest of the, the answers that are coming up, right? But anyway had that refrigerator that was our first house refrigerator so our oldest son is 22 so the refrigerator is 23 years old now that was our backup refrigerator and back in the day when I had a $250 grocery budget to shop strategically and in some months like it might be $300 very rarely would go up to four so $250 to $400 a month grocery budget when I had um, up to five kids ages 12 and under and I wasn't developing and running an online business, I wasn't working as a nurse on the weekends then, but I was using my time to strategically shop once a month and get everything that we need, you know, 15 gallons of milk at one time, because back then we weren't yet a gallon a day family, get like 15 loaves of bread, get all my meat deals, just everything at home and do things like I would freeze seven of the gallons of milk, seven to eight of them um, in that little freezer in the back. I had everything figured out to the last little crumb and I was able to do that. I had a pantry closet and you can go back and watch like some of my very first YouTube videos and I still had the same systems in place there. So the pantry closet, I had that extra refrigerator in, is actually in my back bathroom slash laundry room and then I had the refrigerator up in the kitchen. Now, a little life improvement uh, also within that seat was my neighbor had a yard sale and I looked out my window and he had an old freezer and an old refrigerator. Now they were they weren't like full size. They weren't as big as this refrigerator I have down here, uh, but they were like you know seventy five dollars. So, um, I got that mid size freezer and extra refrigerator, and it's like oh we were really cooking with fire then. Uh, I believe in some of my early grocery hauls you will see my yard sale freezer that I got then, and that was wonderful. I think the refrigerator that I got from him. Um, didn't quite make it through the first summer. So I didn't go to having three, two and a half refrigerators then. Um, but that freezer, I did have that. I probably got two years or so out of that for the $75 I paid, that was definitely worth it. And that's how I handled things when we lived at the farmhouse. 
Now, whenever we moved to our forest house and I started doing, like I did freezer cooking at the farmhouse, but I never had the space to do it on the scale that my heart really wanted. Like I could do 12 slow cooker freezer meals and get them into the freezer. I could do a couple casseroles. Back even when I had three kids, I would do the one for now, one for later type casseroles. So we'd have one for dinner, one would be in the freezer, and I could get like, you know, three or four ahead on that. Before we moved to the forest house, I was able to do like my hope of all hope, dream of all dreams, like super 40 large family meals at one time and be good for like six to eight weeks. It was fantastic. Also at the farmhouse, I did like freezer peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and freezer French toast. But again, I was working with the half freezer in my kitchen, the freezer on top of that black refrigerator. It was, and then I was working with, I don't know, I'm 5'4", so it was like the yard sale freezer was one about this size. So again, I was able to start doing a little more there. But when we moved to the forest house, come to mama, <laughs> two. So only one at a time though. And these, I feel like even then it was back, back in the olden days, right? When I got this freezer, and I know this one has like the paint off the door handle, but whatever. When I got that freezer, it was like a $600 freezer at Lowe's, which is a lot and was a lot. I'm just saying the prices have continued to go up. Um, and I did not any, I didn't have the yard sale freezer anymore. I don't even think that got moved to the forest house with us. I think it went before we moved. So when we moved there, I obviously needed a full size freezer and mama got one, yay. Then, as I got going more with more freezer meals and more recipe development, and, and then we bought our first, we didn't buy half a cow, we bought a whole cow, uh, and then we also bought a whole hog. So I needed a second freezer to hold all of that. I think we also got 25 chickens. Like I just, I bulk bought a lot of meat, and that was like half of one freezer and a whole other one. So that's how we got those two freezers. Then, Hold on here, doo, 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 doo. look I'm answering questions and giving info. Um, we'll get to this one, but it doesn't enter into the timeline yet. So then, at the forest house, along with the refrigerator had in the kitchen and this black refrigerator and these two freezers. So, like our daily large family food, and we had up to 10 living at our forest house. Um, our daily food, kitchen refrigerator and like this extra black refrigerator because that would hold like extra gallons of milk and you know if I did cut a watermelon or if we had leftovers I, I needed that refrigerator right it got to the point in my life and my work and feeding my family and sharing about feeding my family on these interwebs that I might have you know the big mega bowl of cheese all cut up and I may have uh, all these veggies prepped and all these things for these recipes that I'm working on but I didn't have anywhere to put that extra recipe development food okay are you in this matrix with me so enter in this refrigerator that I got at the forest house. So in the garage at the forest house, I had, I feel like this is a school lesson. We need our whiteboard, right? We had these two freezers and two black refrigerators. Yay, okay. Then, dun, 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 we moved in here. When we moved in here, this house had this refrigerator in the upstairs kitchen and now, well, it's a drink refrigerator pretty much, I feel like. And I never thought I would be a person that would just have a drink refrigerator. But, you know, again, other people live here and, you know, people like things more than water. I'm always just a have a cup of water <laughs> or a glass of milk type mom. But, like, Travis has beverage choices. Okay, he lives here too. That's cool. So, anyway, that was in the kitchen. And I wanted a bigger refrigerator for in the kitchen. The refrigerator I bought, which there's... Oh, documentary it seems like on the refrigerator I bought at the forest house that refrigerator like they wanted the refrigerator with that house and it was like it was the bigger version of this one this is like the smallest French door refrigerator that I could find because that was all the space I had in the baby kitchen got it okay so this has been the kitchen refrigerator for almost three years and then this tan one I mean I didn't need a third extra refrigerator but I've used it, I haven't complained about it. So, right now, <laughs> and this brings us to the present day. Well, there's some more information too, but as far as the refrigerators, 
I have two different friends who need refrigerators and I've tried to give this refrigerator to them. If I have something I can give to someone and you know be a blessing and all of that and pass it on, I love to do that. They cannot, neither of them can fit this refrigerator in their spaces and it's sad. I want to give it to them. Um, so right now it just, I mean, it's just holding, it's not even all the way full. It's got some odds and ends in there. Uh, the freezer has, oh, uh, let's see here. Well, I'd be better if I brought you over. But anyway, all those tomatoes that I got on sale for like $15, the book out box, all of those are in this freezer. And we're going to can those. Um, I feel like, I guess I could give you a refrigerator tour, but uh, info, info. So, to answer the question on where, where, oh, where, Jamaro, are the refrigerators and the freezers going? Well, what were we going to do, friends? We were going to build, we're just jumping, we're just in here now, aren't we? We were originally, like when we started the Mega Mama Kitchen Project, I just thought, okay, it just makes sense. Upstairs in that space, plumbing is all there, all of that. I want a laundry room, like an actual laundry room. We will do a laundry room and a freezer refrigerator room. Also knowing this refrigerator I'm going to give to somebody and that tan refrigerator, although again, it's being used like we don't have to have that in a space. So if I was going to build a laundry room with freezers and refrigerators, it would be the two black refrigerators, the two white freezers, and then these two don't have to live here. We've decided to do something different upstairs now. And the only place, really, to put these that makes sense right now. Now, Travis, again, I'm, we got an electrician in the house, right? He just ran me whatever kind of electrical situation we needed for all this on this wall. Yes, yeah, super helpful, super convenient. And I wasn't planning on this area to be like my freeze-dry kitchen and freeze-dry food and food storage and freezers and refrigerator. We're standing in the area that I've been thinking for a long time that this was gonna be a second living room. We've never had a second living room. We don't need a second living room, but it would be nice. We would use it, but for now, it's like this may be temporary, this may be forever. <laughs> I now have a freeze dry kitchen and freezers and refrigerator, food storage space. So it's like a family space and a workspace. And that is what this is right now. Now we had, again, like if we would have started on this basement last fall instead of the kitchen, we were gonna do master bedroom with another bathroom, like, you know, big walk-in closet, like mom and dad's suite area, second living room, and then like a library room. We already did have the other bathroom done down here, and then like maybe an office room. Right now, I'm not so sure because as things have developed um, and now that the kitchen's in, our focus is really on remodeling and renovating the main living areas upstairs, which I will just take you on up there and we'll talk in there in a minute. But to continue on with the refrigerator and freezer situation, also in 2020, so we raised a bunch of chickens, we butchered and processed a lot of our own meat, and I had both of these full they were full of freezer meals, full of stuff I'd gotten on sale, you know, just freezers full of stuff. They did not have room for all the homegrown chickens and the meat and such that we had going on. So I wanted to get another full-size freezer for that meat storage. There were, as we all know, in 2020, there were no full-size freezers available. So one day I just happened to be at, I think it was a Home Depot, and they had just got a shipment in of like, 12 of these uh, seven cubic feet much smaller chest freezers and again in no universe did i ever want small seven cubic feet chest freezers but these freezers are 21 cubic square feet and i'll show you there's a variety of meat and some different freezer meals and such in here right now it's nowhere as loaded as it could be and as we've had it before don't worry the cooking days are coming i couldn't get another one to hold all that meat that we had raised so i got three of those seven cubic feet freezers 
because my thinking was three times seven, seven times three, that would equal another one of those. And I use those for meat storage. I have meat stored in them now. I did buy half a cow. It was about six months ago, but I do have a whole hog ordered and I do have another half a cow. The whole hog we will get in October, later in October, and then uh, the cow will be December. And these already are in use. So here's what I'm thinking. And this will be another, not everyone's gonna follow me and like this thing that's about to come out of my mouth, but this is, this is my rodeo, this is what we're doing. So those three small meat freezers, I would much rather have, you know, freezers in this area, right? I'm looking for a local home for this refrigerator. I know the Lord's gonna guide me to the right person who would love to be blessed with this refrigerator. I'm gonna get another freezer and probably put it here. And those three seven cubic feet freezers, I actually have three families I'm giving those to. So again, even though I'm buying myself another freezer for my freezer organization, I'm still being a blessing to other families who would love to have those other freezers. I got those three families lined up. Travis, a day later this week, is gonna go get me the other freezer for in this area. And then we will pull out what's in those freezers now, get them in this. And then when we do that, we will do the handoff. We will deliver the freezers to the other families and we will have another freezer in here. Hopefully in the near future, it ends up being here. So that's the other little roundabout thing that we're doing now. But wait, Jim Morrell, you have this freezer. Mm -hmm. I do, I do. And I have this freezer and it is dedicated to always be freeze drying or it's not freeze dried. That would be nice. The freeze dry freezer. It's dedicated to pre-freezing my trays for the freeze dryer. When things are all said and done, I will have probably <laughs> three refrigerators, the tan one, the two black ones, and I will have four large white freezers in here. I use this one in conjunction with my freeze dryer setup. Otherwise, I would be putting these trays in my already loaded freezers, like on top of stuff, and people can definitely do that and I know, I mean, that's what most people do. It's just in my JMRL food spinning world, this is the best way I can figure it out to make it easy on me. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. This should be going, that's questionable. But if I have all my freezers and, free and refrigerators for all the things I'm doing, I guess Travis can have, you know, a drink and snack refrigerator too, right? Like that's probably fair. Also mom life. So even me like filming this with the freezers and stuff is like a 30 minute situation I just talked to a bunch of different kids the words that just had to come out of my mouth were if you have a mustache or if you're about to have a mustache you're probably too big for the trampoline I feel like it's a mom mic drop okay so let's see if we can get upstairs now and work on repotting these amazing plants that I got and go through the rest of the questions I think that it you know what no I didn't okay laundry room laundry room so where I have those three seven cubic feet freezers now, on the other side of my current bathroom, the plumbing, the even the plumbing from where the upstairs uh, stackable washer and dryer are now, it's all over in that corner. So when we give away those freezers to be a blessing to others, and I get the other freezer for my storage there, and then that corner is clear, that's where the whole laundry situation and it's not even going to be a room to start because we got other stuff happening we can't do the other stuff upstairs until we get that corner cleared down here and get the laundry set up down here and as far as the laundry room in the basement uh lots of houses have laundry rooms in basement at our first house where we had Jaden at i had like the perfect one level laundry room situation <laughs> and i've never had that you know since then i had like what we you know just the two of us or just the three of us there so at the farmhouse my laundry was in the bathroom same thing with the forest house here it has actually been a huge upgrade to like have this little mini laundry room upstairs where the stackable washer and dryer are uh so anyway for them to be downstairs and to have their own little room it's good it's good i'm just fine with that 
because other things, more important things, things more important than laundry are happening upstairs. Now we shall go. sit there for about 10 to 15 minutes to seep but I wanted to give you this perfect real life example so I know somewhere in the questions why the two sinks Jay Morrell well so yes hot dogs are in there and here's life <laughs> so I will also say we have had four guests at our house for the last several days so there's 15 here right now and we also I just unloaded the soup and got that going in the freeze dryer. And then these are just, it's like, oh, it's 6 p.m. now, where'd the day go? These are the day's dishes. That's our extra overflow. This is life. Both dishwashers need unloaded, and then this needs loaded. That'll happen. But because of life happening like that, my dream of all dreams was to have another sink that we don't put dishes in, that I just have to use for the things that I need to do. Plan was to have a campfire tonight and roast hot dogs and s'mores. Sorry, I also have some salad, some vegetable prep in there. Um, anyway, <laughs> was planning to do that, but I knew I had hot dogs in the freezer. Well, oh, instead, okay, we can't roast frozen hot dogs. So I've been doing cold water defrosting with these hot dogs for dinner. And it doesn't have to be done or over or along with all of that that's going on. So yes, dream of all dreams. If I had, you know, a pot of potatoes going or anything else going on the stove, noodles going, anything I needed to drain, I could do it in the sink. These veggies are sitting out because I also want to prep those and have those ready to go more for myself. And I also want to get them used up so I can still rinse off these veggies and prep them. Of course, once I move the hot dogs. But anyway, just thought, oh look, look at this real life thing that's happening that just helps show where my mind is with these two sinks. And another question. Why is my sink always full of dishes besides the fact people and we live here and like right now we've got 15 people here. I could totally do my dishes instead of filming this Q&A over the next hour or so. So anyway, uh, priorities. I'm gonna sit here and chat with you. The dishes can wait, we'll get to them. But I will say, having two dishwashers, again, as I joke, it has totally understood the assignment. Have, we are loving having two dishwashers. Yes, we are. So where did you get all your stained glass? So opening up my questions here that I got over on Instagram, where have the extra fridges and freezers gone? I'm just answering questions before I even get to them because I know they come. So there you go, already answered that, yay. So going through these questions, could the plastic water bottle holders fit above the ice maker? I got this neat little, uh, got two of them, water bottle holding stands and they will not fit in the cabinet above the ice maker. So for now I have them up above my coffee cups just made sense to me. And whenever kids get a water bottle that they're using a lot, you know, they usually keep it with them or keep it in their bed. Uh, but for the clean ones that are waiting to be used, so far in the few weeks we've been in here, 
everybody knows that's the direction they head to get one of those reusable water bottles. So someone says, Jim Morrell, are you going to have your large table joined together? So the large table is joined together. Travis screwed it together, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So it is, it is officially completely one table now. What's the inside of your fridge looking like? Did you use your storage bins? Yes, I did in the video. I believe that should be before this one. If you missed it, go back and have a look. I, re I organized the refrigerator with it, and it's probably been a week or so since I did that. Is it been a week? I think it's been over a week and a half now, actually. It's still holding together. We're still putting things back in the bins. We're using the little bit of space uh, in front of the bins to also put things, but it's all so far working out. The top leftover shelf, that's working out nicely. What cabinet model at Lowe's did you choose for the Mega Mama kitchen? I'm trying to think. What? Arcadia? Okay. Conveniently, Travis is in here to help me remember things. So it's the Arcadia cabinets. They look like... Um, Oh, Travis, what's this kind of a shaker cabinet? Yes, they look like a shaker cabinet. Arcadia, that's what they are. Okay. Um, and those were the Lowe's in stock cabinets. Now I am going to get to break down the math for this Mega Mama kitchen for you and we'll nerd out on the numbers and stuff. But I have already seen in another video that the cabinets cost around 12000 that doesn't include the insulation. That's just because we purchased them, then we had people do all that work. So sometimes when you get a cabinet quote, it might include the installation. Like some of the quotes that I got for custom cabinets to be made in here were like $57,000, $64,000. Those were beautiful handmade cabinet companies and uh, that, that do cabinets all over Virginia, but that cost included the installation as well. So anyway, we, we, we'll get to numbers, we will, we will. So I do have the question several times on here, anything you wish you would do different? Anything you would change about the kitchen? Have you had any wish I did or did it moment? So, so far we've been in here, I, I would say almost a month by now. Um, spices still aren't done. I have put a few over in that cabinet and then I just walk over here to get things and put them back. It'll, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. So you'll see, I, I really haven't taken a pressure like I have to do all this this week. I definitely felt like that when it was like go time to get in here, but you know, we've started school, we have family visiting, we have other things going on, we've, we've had some birthdays. Yeah, so I just pick away at it when I can. So the spices are coming up next. You saw earlier, I went ahead and just uh, dropped one of the shelves down in my cabinets over there and I went ahead and put both bread machines in there because the bread machines have been out now for about a week and a half or so. I haven't added cooking routines into our homeschool routines yet where I have things processing and cooking throughout the day, you know, start them in the morning, check in at lunchtime, all of that. It's just real easy getting going around here. So I thought, I don't have to look at those bread machines since they're not being used. Anything that's not being used every day, I do like to put it up. I just know with those bread machines that once I get going with them again, they're just gonna end up staying out. But, okay, I put them away, I put them in that cabinet. So I dropped the shelf down and I put the little shelf pegs up. Um, that way I don't lose the pegs or the shelf, you know, whenever I need to do something different with that cabinet. Um, but as I already said in another video, things like um, the toasters and the blender and the teapot and the coffee pot, we, we use those every day. And I want my kids and my family to be able to come in here. Like this isn't just mama's YouTube kitchen. You know, I want them to be able to put their pancakes from the freezer in the toaster and make smoothies when they want. And Hey, my tea is ready, I just remembered that. So these are the only countertop appliances I have out, but this, this is where we live, this is where things are happening. And then over here, okay, we do have the ice maker. That is Travis's ice maker, he loves it. It makes hearts come out of his eyes. And like we say, Travis, we decided you're allowed to have your own drink refrigerator downstairs in the basement, okay? <laughs> and you're allowed to have your own ice maker. I hope y'all know, We're, this is just plain old banter. You what? That's true, he's not the only one who uses it. I put ice in my drinks all the time, yeah. So anyway, uh, oh and he did fix the ice maker and um, 
it's just been fantastic. So I do have my kitchen a mixer out on the counter. And that probably is something that, unless I'm going with projects, that can be put up. I think that will fit in one of my cabinets, actually. So I probably should move that, but yeah. Okay, I'm gonna not move right now. I'm gonna stay put, Jamro. But the mixer can probably go up, except when we get doing projects, and then it'll probably just be here on the island. But everything here that I showed you is just, there's just no point in putting these things up at all whatsoever. I mean, the only thing, like, if we were doing showroom kitchen, right, I guess I could have like the little doors that come down so you don't see it during the day while they're sitting here. I don't know, but that would have been those $57,000 cabinets and yeah. So, anywho, anywho. See, this is like you're chatting and having tea with me at the island. I was trying to answer the question on what would I change or what would I have done different. Almost one month in, I don't have anything I don't have anything that I would change or do anything different. I'm looking around. I think this wall of cabinets over here behind us was a real good idea because we only had, uh, what, 12 inches there, Trav? It needed something done with it. I figured if these cabinets weren't here, I was thinking bookshelves, but that's not what I really needed in this room. I mean, what mama wouldn't love a wall of bookshelves in her kitchen, yes, but, I really needed, you know, storage and upstairs pantry for in this room. Uh, and even some work cabinets if I could. I've got two cabinets there dedicated to like cameras and batteries and things that I need often. I wasn't sure, like when we looked at the design, when I was standing in here, I thought, I hope that looks right. But it seemed like a good use of space. And it was, it has worked out. And even at one point I looked at that little desk and I thought, okay, well maybe that's not wide enough, maybe, I'm just not gonna use it that much, and I'm using that every day, right? I don't necessarily, we do have a bench that we had gotten with this first table originally like three years ago. The bench is pushed under there. I usually just take one of the kitchen chairs and turn it around and sit there and use that computer some. That computer and I are still getting to know each other. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting to know that area and I'm already using it more than I thought I would when I when I was looking at it. So that, so the wall of cabinets is something that I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about it when it was done and I looked at it, but now that it's here, I love it. Almost a happy accident that we planned. It worked out really well. So uh, yay for that. Some things I do wanna like change or work with or I will do. I told you I do have the window sills ordered. So we are having window sills that are hickory that match this floor. Now, now, ooh, this tripod's doing all kinds of things. We see, we see my hood there. So if it goes well with these windowsills, which I mean, I'm sure it will, it's just I didn't wanna overwhelm that company with like, here's 10 hickory projects I'd like you to do. But I would love for them to do like a big hickory trim piece to go around the bottom part of my hood. I would like that. I don't regret the white cabinet at all. I just, again, like, we're doing the window sills. Still on order, we're still waiting for the crown molding that's gonna go above those cabinets. So that will be done. Third time, let's say it, window sills will be done. Then I'm gonna surprise them with, surprise, I want a big trim, hickory trim piece for around that hood. I think that will look really nice. I do think we're gonna end up painting. To start, and I did this in my farmhouse too, like in the farmhouse when it just, like needed to be fresh, I just, let's just do it all white, right? Let's just make it bright. So in here, I was like, let's just, let's get it white to get started and we will go from there. So as we get into remodeling, like doing our big living room and doing other projects in this house, I wanna pick a nice color that we can have everything painted. And it also needs to be a color that would look nice with these white cabinets. So please let me know your Sherwin-Williams colors below. Whenever we moved into this house, and you can watch my first house tour video. I mean, this was just an old, dingy, I mean, we saw all the potential, All it was all of our hopes and dreams, but this house had been lived in and loved for a very, very long time, and the couple that built it, I mean, lived here until they went to be with Jesus, and all their kids grew up here. In the last couple years, the gentleman lived here into his like mid to late 90s, 
on his own. We just knew, you know, the whole the whole place needed to be painted and fresh, and you can go back and watch those moving vlogs from three years ago. But we just had the whole house painted. It's called Online by Sherwin Williams, that particular gray color. And then we had the kitchen cabinets painted. It was called, I think it was called Broadway also by Sherwin Williams for when you all have asked me the colors of the gray in the house or the gray on the cabinet. So I got kids on scooters. Look, I can sit here and talk and I can see the kids riding their scooters, yay. But I don't think I wanna do that blue gray. I mean, I could. And then I sit and like, well, maybe I do. I'm just not sure. So that's why, and again, the decision fatigue that goes into a project like doing this kitchen, just white was just fine. Um, I thought about a cream. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code LFTABLE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. We love cooking HelloFresh as my kids call it. HelloFresh is our fancy food. Do you have a pack schedule this fall? HelloFresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items all delivered to your door. HelloFresh's line of kid-friendly recipes is picky eater proof, perfect for families looking to try something new this school year. And wholesome recipes make it easy to eat well without sacrificing flavor. So you can maintain your goals and feel good about your food choices with HelloFresh. HelloFresh cuts down on your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery store shopping. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code LFTABLE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com and code LFTABLE65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Yay. So I'm glad that I didn't pick a color in here because at that point my mind wasn't as far thinking through the whole house renovation as it is now. And again, I would like a color that pretty much just carries through the whole living space. Just like that blue-gray, that online by Sherwin Williams. Um, you know, that has been good to us. I just, if we're gonna pay to have it painted again, I would like to do something a little different. And it may just be a different gray. I don't know. So I'm glad I'm waiting until I know about that. I don't have to know right now. And in the meantime, this is bright, this is fresh, this is also okay. So another question, why not use your baby kitchen for homeschooling and utilize the cabinets in there for new pantry space? So I'll answer the first part of this and then we'll get into all the, what are we doing with the um, kitchen space. The main reason is I have always just ended up being a kitchen homeschooler. Um, at our farmhouse, there were several years that we had a dedicated homeschool room. And uh, the, you know, the kids had separate desk space. I had other bookshelves. I mean, it was all thrifted and such, but it, it was very nice. I tried to like 
have I had a children's museum theme in my head where I got like the chalkboard paint and I painted a house shape on the wall so like Naomi could have a little doll house uh, feeling chalkboard and I think we did like a whole wall with chalkboard paint we did glow in the dark paint uh, we had an aquarium in there so it still would end up being like we had to leave where we were living most of our life and go into that space to do school but a lot of our school blends in with life anyway so we would find ourselves like ended up with all our homeschool things spread out on the kitchen table anyway it went and we did have uh for a while if you go back to my farmhouse videos you can see them i don't think it was set up this way in those videos i don't think it was set up as oh it was kind of a school room then wasn't it so i had the big table in the kitchen and then i had another room that had bookshelves i had that yard sale freezer um i had the computer it was like a school room but there wasn't a table in it anymore there used to be a big there was a big dining room table my mom gave us so the kitchen had a big table and then right through the door the school room had a big table and then we had a living room with our couches and how farmhouses are they were all these like little closed off rooms not a big open living space so yeah just as we added more people to our household it was like okay we have to <laughs> gotta get some room to like just walk here can we just like walk through a room we passed on the big table that was in our then school room because again even then two rooms with the tables we still would end up taking stuff out of that school room into the kitchen because as a mom who's home preparing food and taking care of my family no matter how i swing it like all homeschool moms will tell you okay we end up doing a lot of things with food and so if a kid needs help with something or if a child is reading or if i'm just supervising them doing their work and i'm getting something in the bread machine or i'm working on getting lunch done we're just in the kitchen a lot and so it has always seemed so natural to me, uh, you know, while I'm supervising the pot of soup on the stove or whatever, to just have us spread out at the kitchen table and do our homeschooling there. So, so to us, it is perfectly normal and natural to spread out at a table in a kitchen space and do our schoolwork there. It also gives us, you know, sink accessibility for art, whatever is happening you know the second breakfast that's a joke amongst homeschoolers <laughs> whenever we need second breakfast we're always here for the food it's where it works best for us and also for us let's just say i didn't need i didn't need <laughs> didn't need um the space that the baby kitchen takes up and the dining room area takes up if that was just extra space and i didn't know what to do with it i still wouldn't make it a dedicated homeschool space I mean I might put couches in there and bookshelves because we can always use more couches and bookshelves but again really for our homeschool time like I designed this kitchen with homeschooling in mind also this is comfortable this is a fantastic place for us and we don't do everything at the table I mean you know we're outside we're doing other things but anyway even if I had an extra room or extra space I wouldn't make it into dedicated homeschool space we have bookshelves all around like I say whenever we get to the basement renovation you know it still might work out that we have a library room downstairs uh, it makes sense for our family to just have bookshelves everywhere I mean that's the biggest thing that says homeschooling to me in my world is a big home library and so our home library is everywhere and that makes sense because homeschooling and life is everywhere but like the instagram pictures you see of, of some setups which again may work perfect for some moms but for me to have a room where like i have a teacher's desk and the kids all have their separate desk and it's just set up with more of a classroom feel i don't want that kind of space that's why we don't have it. and times in the past when i have had it we didn't end up using it in that way and we still ended up at the kitchen table so there you go and so that brings me to the other half of that question and also the question i have received you know like a dozen or more times in the comments of every video and a bunch on instagram and in my instant you know just all over and everybody wants to know what i'm doing with the baby kitchen now on many many videos i have taken the time to like answer 
answer that every single time. Uh, and then sometimes like I'll answer it six times and then I might take the sixth time and I just, with quotation marks, like here's what I said to a recent viewer and I just paste that answer and I go through and like, I'm just pasting that answer to that question again and again and again. But the video that I just published yesterday, I have it a dozen times again. So anyway, I don't know if I'll be heard in this one or not, but everyone's excited. You all are just excited like I am and you've been watching this and you've been watching the baby kitchen and you just want to know what's going to happen to her. Um, and so we're ripping out her guts. How do we like, <laughs> like that? So the baby kitchen will be ripped out. It will not be here anymore. Will we save the cabinets? It's gonna depend on how they were installed, right? In 1963, it's just gonna depend on, and Travis isn't so sure. Okay, okay. It's gonna depend on what they encounter. And so I have, like the ideas are wonderful. The ideas, you know, the homeschool room idea about making it into a laundry room, about making it into a walk-in pantry upstairs. We, it just gets into like the, the square footage of this house and the things are in place that we have to work around and work with. Um, so this door, let's discuss. If I would make this into a walk-in pantry, which so makes sense, however, just the way life is. Like we are mainly going to always, <laughs> mainly always, yes and amen, come in and out of these kitchen French doors. It's just where like 95% of the foot traffic is. Uh, we haven't been using the front door that's on this house. I've shared about that before. We just entered through when this was a garage, we entered through the garage and came in through this green door over here. And like that was our traffic pattern. So that is now the, the system that's in our head. So I don't think we will, it'll ever be changed. So if that was my pantry, that would mean people would come into the kitchen and then they would have to walk through the pantry to get to the rest of the house. Also, we had thought about making that area into a laundry room, but then if you're in the one side of the house, you would have to walk through the laundry room to get to the kitchen or walk through the laundry room to get out. Yeah, so it's just not gonna work. Uh, but this wall here where the cabinets are is a load bearing wall. And I know that we're remodeling and we're doing things and yeah, I know it's expensive and I know it should be how we want it. But again, like the bones of everything is very good. We just have some certain parameters we have to work with. Uh, Travis can do our electrical for free, right? Like we got that covered. Of course the materials <laughs> are not free. Yeah, he's not ripping out load bearing walls or anything like that. So what we need, what our family needs is about two more bedrooms and we need a big living room. Those are a higher priority than a laundry room and a walk-in pantry. If, if we had extra space for that too, sure, yes. Yeah, yes and amen, we definitely do that. But we definitely, we need two more bedrooms and we definitely need a big living room. So what my hopes and dreams are is that we're in this big kitchen and then we're gonna walk through this green door which I guess maybe we will just paint it that fresh green, right? Walk through the green door and then we're in. Sorry, I just had a vision of maybe I should paint my range hood green. <laughs> so I'm trying. What do you think about that, Travis? I don't know. I don't know. See, I knew when I got in here and started living in here, things would happen. Hold on, let me look at it for a minute. Hmm. I'm just going to leave that there. Let's get the hickory trim on it. Okay, like my brain hurts now that <laughs> I saw that. Okay, but I wanna go through this green door. I wanna have a, a big living room for our family. I mean, I don't know that it's bigger than any other average living room, but it'll be the biggest living room we've ever had, right? Bigger than like the living room at our first house. Would you say it would be the size of both of those two rooms that we had? This doesn't mean a thing to you all, but I don't know, whatever. It's a little more rectangular than I would like. It's going to be a big living room. We are recent development. I do need a decent sized cleaning closet. We have two little jammed up closets. Um, when you go through this green door and we have our shoe boxes and two little jammed up closets. I would like, well, okay. I have to feel like I have to walk you back. Go through the green door. There's a wall. That wall is 
what the refrigerator and the countertops and such are with the baby kitchen. So that's just gonna be blown out of there. The building inspector already told Travis that's not a load bearing wall. He can just take all that out, no big deal. So walls are coming down here very soon and the kitchen stuff's coming out. Then when you come through the green door, one side I wanna have like just a nice, decent cleaning closet with the broom holders on the side so things aren't falling around and just mama wants a cleaning closet, okay. And then on the other side, we think we are going to do a half bath. I mean, I guess they could tell us, no, we can't. So, but the building inspector likes Travis. I don't think he'll tell you no. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. So we would like to, yes, and that's a great, and I've heard this idea. Many viewers have said, put a bathroom there, put a bathroom there. So now that we're here, we're like, yes, we'd like to have a bathroom. And I'd like to have a cleaning closet. So that's like on this side. And then the rest of it, baby kitchen and dining room and the blue couch area that you guys have been watching for years, that would just be all open and the walls would be painted, whatever this great neutral color is that you're going to tell me that I need to paint everything. And the floors are going to be these floors. Okay, this is Harvest Hickory from Lowe's. Okay, we love it. And it's gonna be open. And I mean, I could probably easily put four couches in there if I wanted to, which I don't think, I'll, I can see it was with three. Three in a chair, okay, two. Are you giving, it's like we're at auction, he's giving me numbers. Anyway, but we have room, we have options. Now, the thing that I wish we could do that we can't, and if someone tells me we can, I'll say you've changed my whole life. But where that fireplace is, you know this. But if you're new, you don't know this, and you need to know this if you're gonna hang out with us, okay? Where the fireplace is, there's a fireplace on both sides. Say it with me, long time viewers. And, but I found out that there's concrete that goes from the roof all the way down to the basement floor. So there's two stories of concrete and there's three chimneys, two that don't work, one that's been, we invested to have replaced and we have a new basement wood stove that would heat the whole house. Okay, so we can't take that out. If we could take that out, I would take out that whole wall and just have this huge space. But since we can't, my other thought has been with our front living room, which is a good size living room, probably like half the size of this room. It's just like an average living room size. And you know, we got, got a couch and a love seat and a chair and a TV in there and laundry baskets. But um, I have thought, okay, in my thought process, we could make that whole thing into like an upstairs laundry room. But thinking through what my family needs, I mean, our laundry just gets shoved in the washer, shoved in the dryer, put in baskets, folded in the evening. I don't want to dedicate upstairs square footage to that. I have teenagers. We can do it. You know, it's good for the arm muscles, young men. If you're old enough to grow a mustache, you're old enough to carry laundry baskets for your mom up in the basement, right? So my plan is now that our front living room will be turned into two more bedrooms. That means there's framing that's gonna need to be done, there's gonna need to be a closet built in each room to make them an official bedroom. Actually, Zion's room, which is our, our fourth bedroom, we will have six bedrooms once this is done. But then again, like big kitchen, big living room, six bedrooms and two and a half baths all on one level, I'm not mad about that. I'm excited, you excited? Okay, Zion's room was the old original dining room that we had closed into a bedroom. Uh, we need to have a closet built in that also to make that an official room. But then everyone will have a closet and uh, it'll, it'll be good. As we get that done, then both our bathrooms upstairs, oh, I cannot wait to do bathroom renovation videos for you. It'll just be amazing. <laughs> so got a lot going on in those bathrooms. Those definitely need done. And then we do have a third bathroom in our basement. So we'll have three and a half baths, which is great. I mean, a large family can always use four toilets. So that's the plan right now. Also renovation things going on. I have my little, like Lowe's, where are you? Don't you know that I'm doing YouTube videos for you? On the exterior of the house, I would like 
exciting and I want things done outside too. Once we get the whole upstairs done, which I don't even, I don't have any dates for you. I mean, I feel like it's just gonna be one thing at a time, right? We've had to get the freezers and the refrigerators squared away downstairs. We have to hand off those three seven cubic feet freezers and then I need to call the plumbing company that did our other plumbing in here and tell them I want that washer and dryer hookup downstairs. All the plumbing is, is here. I have to have them officially do that. And then we'll probably just have like an open laundry area in that corner for a season and that's fine. Then officially we'll have this washer and dryer out and then Travis can start tearing things up. Probably right around the time the weather starts getting bad and we're all inside. <laughs> We'll tear things out, but that'll be good winter exercise. Um, then our contractor man who headed up and did a lot with pulling this kitchen together for us, uh, he's ready to go to frame a cleaning closet, frame a bathroom, do the bedrooms, do all those things. And at that point, we will need our building permits again. Once we're done with the demo, we'll need the building permit to I don't know, make sure the closets are like up to code with the size, you know, how, whatever, how, whatever they want. Yes. Okay. Make it Travis squint. These take a long time for me to film, don't they? You see why? Like Travis has never been here while I filmed a Q and A. So there you go. That's what we're doing with the baby kitchen. Stick around and we'll see how it all works out. Do you find yourself cooking more now that you have a bigger kitchen? So, I don't think so. I feel like I'm just cooking my regular amount right now, which means I'm doing meals that we get a couple days out of. And I am like, I'm getting that soup in the freeze dryer. Um, I'm getting tomatoes in the freezer. It's like, I feel like odds and ends, but I haven't been able to do like a whole dedicated mega cooking day. Cause again, like we just had our first week of school last week second week of school this week. These are like our warm up weeks, I feel like. And so I'm hoping, always hopes and dreams, right? So hopes and dreams are that I can take two or three dedicated cooking days where I just like cook from nine to nine or something like that. But I haven't had that kind of time lately. I'm super hopeful that the end of this week, uh, maybe I can do prep work Thursday evening and then maybe during our day Friday, I could get like meat in the roasters and those kind of things. And maybe it'll say Saturday, I have a dedicated cooking day. But I know you all don't see all these people that live up in here in these videos, but there's a lot of people here and there's a lot of kids here. There's a lot going on. And so I just haven't had that kind of time. The time that I have had have been these long, like getting my kitchen ready type videos where I've been taking a couple hours here and there to do all this stuff. You go watch back and watch like the last four or five videos. That's what I've been doing. So I'm hoping very soon, end of this week, yes, it ain't bad, that I'm going to instead, if I can conquer those spices, I can in instead take those little couple hours here and there and work on big cooking projects. It's coming, it's coming. We're almost there, yay. So, the big question. How much did the Mega Mama Kitchen cost, Jim Rowe? Well, let's consider all things. I'm, I'm gonna actually, Travis, that's what he was sitting here doing. He was doing an itemized list. He has a binder with all the receipts and everything we purchased and all the details, but then he wrote me, a list for easy access so I'm not like turning pages in the binder and saying, oh yeah, that's what this costs. Okay, so we're gonna just jump right into this. Um, by adding this kitchen on, and of course we turned the square footage footprint that was here, you know, the space was a two car garage. Lots of folks are have been worried about Travis giving up his garage space. And like Travis has said since the beginning is we did not buy this house for this garage space. This was not his dream garage. I mean, yes, we put freezers and refrigerators and stuff in here, but that's okay. We will get to building Travis his dream garage, but we needed this kitchen first for a whole lot of reasons that I have shared in many, many videos. Uh, but adding this kitchen on, uh, when 
as we bought the house, the main level was 2,000 square feet and the basement was 2,200 square feet because there's a room um, off the back deck there. And so this added, it's, I don't remember if it was 643 square feet or 626, but this kitchen has added on another 600 square feet. So the upstairs is now 2,600 square feet with 22 below. Obviously it's all a work in progress, but so far we have a new kitchen and we have one new bathroom and we'll just continue renewing from there. Also keep in mind that with this kitchen, we didn't take out any debt to do this kitchen. We did underbuy this house, but we knew that the, uh, the savings would be that we would need to renovate and fix it up and do what we wanted to it. So this kitchen was a pretty penny. I'm sure it has added that amount or more of equity to our home. It has been a major upgrade and we also saved for it before we did it. So it just takes a while, especially when you're saving and cash flow and projects. And uh, yeah, that's why we're slow around here. That's why the inside of the house, you know, we're gonna move as fast as cash will take us. And also lining up help and being able to, you know, work with different people's schedules and getting people like Travis can knock out walls. Um, but then it's just gonna be, you know, getting on the list for the plumbing contractors and waiting for our other builder guy to come and frame it out. He's got multiple projects going. So all that to say, all this takes a little bit, but without further ado, let's get into these numbers. All right, we're getting to it. I'm trying to not forget to drink my, my tea. It's decaffeinated, it's evening tea now. Okay, so just start with what Travis has at the top. All right, so we have the big 60 inch Mega Mama stove that we have named Glory that big honking stove. Well, originally, I liked this 48 inch gas stove that was in a navy blue. They had it in navy blue and green and red, like all these different fun colors. And that stove was about $5,800. And I was like, it's blue and it's beautiful. And that would be an amazing stove. I'm sure that'll just be lovely. And so I was really going to get that stove. And then I thought, well, for $5,800, I just, let me take a moment, another moment here. And actually I purchased that stove. I paid for it and of course, you know, it was ordered. And we also didn't know, you know, with um, supply chain, there was a lot of supply chain issues and just labor issues or companies being booked and such that was also during this kitchen building. Um, but with the stove, I thought, okay, wait, maybe buyer's remorse or second thoughts. I was like, ah, let me just, look a little deeper, look again, and uh, see if there's anything else I'd rather have. So in looking at stoves, I began to look for what's the biggest stove I could get? And how many more burners can I get for that much more? And how much bigger are the ovens and all of that? So then that brought me to the 60 inch Z-Line stove with nine burners and the griddle and the big oven and the other oven. And it's all beautiful, it's all lovely. So. That's a $10,000 stove, but I didn't pay 10,000 for it. So the other thing that made me like, okay, I should just go ahead and do this. So I found the stove and I was like, okay, well that's almost, almost twice as much. So that, that's why it's bigger, J. Morrell. And then I got talking to some other folks who have big, gorgeous stoves and their stoves were like 10, 15, $20,000. Like <sighs> there's a whole world of stoves out there. Okay. And people have lots of feelings about stoves. You know, originally I had thought I would just get two, like two 33 inch or two 30 inch, just two really nice single stoves. I don't know what else to call them. Regular old stoves, right? Um, I would just get two of them and that would give me eight burners and two ovens and that would be perfect. Well, a lot of the nice stoves out there, like I think I looked at some kitchen aids and they were like $2,500 each. And I did find some stoves that were like 15 to 1800. So when you do the math on those, that's how I just was able to go to the 5800. I was like, okay, so this is a little more than two stoves, but it's blue and it's amazing. And instead of two KitchenAids, I'd much rather have. Okay, so then 
And when I got into the world of bigger stoves, I was like, okay, yeah, well, 10 is kind of a deal for those. But then, I don't know how, I don't know what sale it was, I don't know why, but I got $2,000 off that stove. I saw it on my app, it was some special, it marked it down to like $8,000. I said, hey, Vernon at Lowe's, because <laughs> Vernon helped me do all my, a lot of my purchases and figuring out of things. I was like, Vernon, okay. I want to, again, and all of this is like in the air. I'm not actually like handing them money. They're, <laughs> we're just doing this through the air, right? I'm like, return. I'm gonna return the blue stove and then I want to buy this stove, but I want that sale price. And he helped me work all that out. So get a Vernon at Lowe's, right? He'll help you. Okay, so I did pay $8,000 for that stove, but I love that stove and it loves me and I am very glad that I got it. And there's a lot of things that people spend money on and that is, I think, well, there are things in this kitchen that cost more, but I'm gonna love that stove for so long. We're gonna love this stove forever, right? Uh, so if you are looking to get like the big 60 inch Z-Line stove, I bought the Lowe's app a little bit for when they have whatever these appliance sales are, save $2,000, you know, uh, ask for Vernon, <laughs> so that's helpful. Okay, so so was 8,000. Next up. Okay, next up, we're leaning back. We are looking at that big range hood. What was that hood, Jay Morrell? I feel like this is, you know, on tonight's episode of Price is Right, the vent hood was about $2,200. That was just the shell. Uh, it was made by a hood company. I believe their name is Hoodly hoodly.com um, and I haven't checked that but I'm pretty sure that's what it was please be right please be right not sponsored not sponsored on there you can order different sizes and the thing is I ordered the hood before I had the stove but I knew like whether I was doing two single stoves I knew something was happening there I don't remember all the details now but you can order custom hoods there. They can do them different colors. Uh, they probably could have done, uh, cause they had like, they had unpainted hoods. I probably could have had a hickory hood done. Maybe I would, now I'm like, would I have rather done that? I mean, for what I paid for it, I'm not changing out this hood, but I think we could add, add some hickory to it. Um, so in the end, I like all my choices, I'm like, white is very nice, white is very nice, white is clean, white is very nice. I will be very happy with white. And that's what we went with. And I wanted a big mega mama range hood and I got it. But the guts for it, like the sole of this hood, cost another $2,105.95. And that is from Z-Line and they had to like configure that and the hood and everything. So now this is, I'm just going in the order that Travis has it. So Travis did the electrical. The electrical thing still cost a lot. And I believe, I mean, you tell me, ladies out there, because Travis hasn't like worked as an electrician in several years, tell me what a licensed electrician to like do a sub panel and all these outlets and the outlets on the island. Like, I think we're getting up there price wise with what that would have cost. So we didn't have any of that expense. Look, we're saving money, okay? So the copper wire alone, which if you're into metal, if you're a copper wire kind of guy, <laughs> you know, Travis is like, oh, that's copper. Oh, it's copper. Oh, they took that pipe because it was copper. We hear a lot about copper around here. Okay. The total copper wire was $3,203.78. The other electrical was $5,561.76. Six cents. I'm circling because then he put the total. So the total of those two, $8,765.14. So that's the supplies that Travis needed to make all of this happen. Now the under cabinet lighting, I think he mentioned that later, that's not on here. That was $150 and it comes in this roll and it's like a strip he put up under those cabinets. So nice planning there um so there you go that's the electrical that does not include the these actual light fixtures we'll get to those um the vent ducking i guess the duct work for that vent was 330 dollars okay next up 
we're gonna talk cabinets. So I've been saying that all these cabinets were 12,000. When Travis like sat here and went over all the receipts, they were $10,720.97. Sounds like a deal. And it, I mean, great in the world of cabinets. That doesn't include the install though. So the install was $5,400 to make all this happen. So the total cost of these cabinets, the installation and cabinets was $16,120.97. Okay, now going back in time, one of the first big projects that they did to take this from a garage into this kitchen, and it's like, look, we invested in this kitchen, so I don't want to call this a garage no more. I'm telling myself, Jam Rell, don't you call this a garage. This is not a garage. <laughs> so the framing, the subfloor, the framing out for the doors and windows, but not the actual doors and windows themselves. The framing and the subfloor, so basically think wood and labor. And if you remember last winter, like the price of plywood went through the roof and people weren't building as much. Uh, all of that, framing, subfloor, all of these things, $15,900. That was like, we're doing this, we're, we're serious. The drywall materials cost $917. The drywall install, that's a big job, cost $3,500. The total cost to insulate was $1,600. So people have asked me if it's insulated. Oh yeah, it's insulated. Do you have air conditioning? Oh yeah, we have air conditioning. Do you have heat? Oh yeah, we have, like we, we have it, we did it. Um, so the total cost to paint, which they did several coats, even though it's white, it's fresh, uh, was $1,650. To install the floor, it was $1,450. Now we have flooring costs here with a question mark. We can't, in Travis's binder, he didn't have the receipt and I haven't even looked for it. So I don't remember if like the, the we had a whole big pallet of this harvest hickory. I don't remember if it was 5,000 or 7,000 or 4,700. I just don't remember right now. I do have places I could go look to find that information, but my family's waiting to roast hot dogs and I'm not gonna dig any deeper. I'm working on Travis's list, but to install it, it was 1450. And that was several workers over two or three days. My cat is crying at me, but I can't move friendly. Alrighty, someone, alrighty, someone got the cat up for me. Let's see here. So both dishwashers, these dishwashers, I've had them for three weeks. We have not broken them. They have been absolutely amazing. I've, I've never been impressed with a dishwasher. But these things are like quiet. They could be running right now. That little red light's blinking. Probably just saying that it needs to be unloaded. I don't know what everything means on it yet. Usually those little red lights flash when they're running because you cannot hear them. Like I could, they could be running now. We would not know it. Isn't that amazing? So the dishwasher's total cost $2,498 for both. So divide that by two. So I'm like, Okay, come on Bosch, that's good. The faucets, so both of these, both of these faucets cost $498 together. Both of the sinks cost $838. The refrigerator, so the big Mega Mama 47 cubic feet refrigerator, dream of all dreams, hope of all hopes. It was $3,698, but it's amazing. And so, you know, I mentioned I'm, I will, like I just know the Lord will find me the right family that needs that um, refrigerator for my kitchen. What I'm about to say is, do I really need the faded refrigerator? But then I'm like, no, that has Travis's drink refrigerator, Jim Brown. I just forget, I forget that that's what we're doing with it. The interior lights, so these three lights I have over the island, my chandelier light, these lights over the sink, all of that were $1,469.52. The cabinet pools, so all of these knobs on all of these cabinets were $573.80. The plumbing, okay, so that was another like big upfront expense too, uh, just to get us going. So to run plumbing in here and for it to all work and like for this to be a kitchen, 
less $3,600. That was the initial amount. The, um, when we had them come out to do the pot filler, I think you had to come out two times with the pot filler. I'm not, I'm not sure on those little receipt numbers. It might be like another $600. Um, the HVAC to bring heated and cooling out here was $800. Now, I had a list of options all the way up to $4,800, but I went with the $800 option, which, cause we just had a whole new whole house HVAC done in summer 2021. So, okay, let's use that. So they just brought it out here. There's one, two, there's three registers out here. And like, you know, in some videos I'm wearing a sweatshirt cause it's cold <laughs> here. The air conditioner is working. And so soon we'll flip the switch on the heat, make sure that the heat is working. So that has been working great. No problem with that. Uh, another huge expense, these quartz countertops, and there's a lot of them, were $13,000. That does include the install price, so yay for that. Uh, the interior trim and molding was $1,400, but also this doesn't include whatever the price is gonna be for the crown molding that I've had ordered and the install of that. I mean, that, that could be another $1,500 or $2,000. Just so I've molded on top of my cabinets, so uh, that's a special thing, definitely not required. That's just how, that's just how much that is. Um, the whole situation with running a gas line in here and like the drilling through the wall and all of that um, was about $1,700. It was $600 for the work they came into the first time and then it was $1,100 like for the day that they made all this happen. And yay for that. I know there's copper pipes and stuff. Well, doors and windows cost like the actual price for these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows, those glass French doors, and this back French door. We just, out of all the receipts, Travis has done such a good job keeping a hold of that. That is one that he could not put his hands on this evening. Um, so that and then the cost of the flooring is what's missing. But I feel like, well, I don't even want to guess to give you numbers for that. Um, and then for the tile, so the supplies for the tile and the grout and all that is involved with tile and grout supplies was $1,282. And then uh, the labor to do the tile work was $2,902. My tile cost $4,184. That's what building the kitchen has cost. Now I will say, if we would have had one of the large construction companies come in and do this project, which, and again, they could not have started until like now, uh, the earliest I was getting was September, 2022. It was going to be more than this, like maybe double than what we came out at because Travis was our general contractor. He was able to go to the county and sign all the papers, I feel like be sworn in, but uh, you know, they approved him. And of course a homeowner can be the general contractor of their own home, but he still had to like do the paperwork and he had to sign that he was not starting a general contracting business and he was not gonna go be a general contractor on any other projects, but you know, he could oversee all the work going on here. Uh, plus Travis did all of the electrical, which I mean, I feel like that at least saved 10,000, if not more, I just know you know, things add up. And it was a lot of work, a lot of hours. And I imagine it would have been, you know, more than just one person that would have been here doing the electrical. It was a six figure kitchen. Okay, okay. But even in our area, like cabins that are this size, that are like six, the cabin my mom and I lived in as I, when I was a teenager, it was about this size. You walked in, a little open kitchen living room area, little bathroom, and then two bedrooms. And it was a 600 square foot cabin. Those cabins in, in this market, in this day and age, in our area, go for about 189 to 220. Now that is on two to three acres of land. But whenever you get into like any kind of big home renovation cost, uh, it all costs a lot, unless you are an actual general contractor. I mean, even then I know things like materials and supplies and labor 
cost a lot. So if you are able to put in the sweat equity like Travis did with the electrical, um, you know, installing the cabinets, doing the cabinet install, that's 5,400. Installing the dry wood is dry wood. Yeah, drywall is 3,500. Um, painting was 1,650. Installing the floor was 1450. Installing, well, I don't know if you can install a gas line. Doing the tile would, would have been a $2,900 savings. So there's definitely things based on skill level and ability and time and all that jazz that you can get a savings on the other end as well. But there you go. That's just about every number that I can pull on what this whole kitchen has cost. The window sills are an additional cost. The crown molding still yet to be done is an additional cost. Uh, the trim that I've now dreamed up for the hood is an additional cost. But I mean, the big stuff, super mega big stuff is done. And then of course we'll paint in here when we paint out there. But I feel like, feel like I need a nap after all that. So moving on to more of our questions, where is your shirt from? On Instagram today, I was wearing this shirt whenever I asked for questions, and I said I was asking for kitchen questions. Okay, shirts from Walmart. Walmart has their fall collection out, the fall mom collection, and I'm, all, I'm, I'm here for it. So, um, let's see. Which kids are really wanting to prepare stuff in your new kitchen? So, everyone's excited about the new kitchen, and those who are old enough have been learning about cooking on the gas stove. I have another one who just this morning wanted to cook eggs. I was like, oh yeah, I hadn't shown you yet. So we walked through cooking on the gas stove. Several of the kids have already used one or both of the ovens. So definitely, every, everybody's getting settled in here. We're, we're definitely rotating the dishes. So yep, learning how things go in the kitchen. Do you wish you had done one huge sink or the two big ones that you have? Well, I will say that the sinks that I have are the biggest sinks I've ever had. I think they're 33 inches. I believe they're sinks that go 42 to 48 inches, which are lovely, but I also really felt the need for two big sinks. I, f I feel like this size is fine. Uh, it's probably like anything, like bigger is always better. Um, but also, when I purchased these sinks, these were the absolute biggest that they had available. So, so anyway, I've been very happy with them. Have you considered storing your baking items, nuts, chips, oils, etc., in your lower Lazy Susan? I have. I might. Again, I just don't know yet. <laughs> right now, in that lower la Lazy Susan, I have the, uh, the plastic wrap and the foil. I have baggies in here, but I have extra baggies. But I have on them the smaller Lodge Dutch ovens that I've been using lately. So spices, spices somewhere, and then we'll go from there. Are you moving the Chicken Sisters into the new kitchen? So this wall over yonder, that wall down there, probably the only one that would fit the Chicken Sisters. And what I have not done a good job at this house, and I feel like at the Forest House too, I just, I love to have like gallery walls with family pictures. I have family pictures all over our other places that we lived. Um, and so I just wanna make sure I get a lot of good family pictures in this room. Um, having Naomi do two watercolor pictures for either side of that green door, like big, beautiful watercolors. I think one is gonna be a sun, a sunset situation. One's gonna be a sunflower situation. I don't wanna put anything over there yet. And then I was like, oh, but you could also do like little eight by tens for me above the door. Um, and then I feel like these two walls over here that I just showed you, the one in between the three windows and the one, and then this one here by the light, I think family pictures will take up those areas, which means the chicken sisters might just live where they are because that's going to be the living room. And then they're gonna be watching TV with us and not judging my groceries. I don't know. So we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. But a lot of these things are, we'll see. Are you going to get blinds or drape? We live like tucked in, in a very private secluded setting. No one can see us except, except the internet, right? No one can look in and see us. Uh, there's woods all around, like we're up here on our own property and there's no houses this way and people can't see us from the road. Um, and same thing like at the forest house, the windows I didn't have blinds on, 
we're like looking into our 14 acre forest. So anyway, I don't feel like I have a need for them. I mean, of course bathrooms are one thing, but like in here, I, I just want the windows open and I have stained glass and I have plants. So I don't want blinds or curtains. Okay, and I'm not very confident with blinds or curtains. I mean, we, again, like the we're rooms, the windows that we do have them in, it's just like a little pull down. I feel like the paper shade. Um, my mom, of course, you know, designer, and so she does the curtain things and look beautiful. And if I would have my mom do them, they would look gorgeous. But, and now I'm like, well, why don't I have my mom do them? I mean, I could. It's another, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like paint colors and those kind of things will come first. Are you going to have enough room for all your Mega Mama cookware? I do think so. And all the cookware now is put away. Hot and I have my two big cast iron pans, those big, lovely 17 inch lodge pans. Those are in my oven. That's where I'm keeping them right now. Um, so I don't know if that's considered put them away or not, but I mean, they're big and they're heavy, right? So I felt like the oven was okay for them. So I do have some copper cookware on top of my refrigerator because that's that's pretty anyway. And I can't really like leave pots out to decorate with because I really use the stove. So anyway, I like if I want a pot up from up there, I did a chili in one of the copper pots, I'll bring it down. So my pans are in the double cabinets beside the stove there. I mentioned I have a few of my Dutch ovens on the bottom of my Lazy Susan. And then this whole island, I mean, the, this whole process I was thinking, I have one cabinet that when you open it, all that's in there is my two big roaster ovens. It's amazing. I have a drawer you open and it's my two waffle irons. I have a whole cabinet full of canning stuff. So I have a lot of stuff, but I, have a lot of places to put the things, the things that aren't daily use things. Like when the canning stuff comes out, I mean, that might be out for weeks, right? And so that's why like the bread machines, since I haven't gotten to that yet, there's a cabinet for them. I do think, um, so my original idea that pantry items would be here and then we'd have homeschool at the other end. I don't think I'm gonna need all those cabinets for homeschooling. Again, we're only a week and a half in. We have some of our work that's being done on the computer. Uh, we have like everything we're doing currently is just in one cabinet. So now that we are living, you know, in this kitchen and cooking and doing meals in here, and again, a week and a half of school and having company over, I don't think that you know, my original plan was like I'm I'm actively homeschooling six. I have two who have graduated, they are adults, I'm actively homeschooling six, and I have a toddler. So I thought six big double cabinets, each kid will have their own double cabinet. But these kids have their own desk in their rooms, like each kid has a desk. We also have those wonderful IKEA shelves I've shown you in other videos. And we have game shelves and we have like shelves for picture books and shelves for chapter books. I mean, my whole library is not unloaded in this house. We know that. We have plenty to work with. And these cabinets were not intended to be library storage cabinets either. Although I have done that before as well. Yes, I have. Um, so I feel like at this point, um, again, we're, we're operating out of one cabinet as far as our daily school work. And then I do have another cabinet that has like a lot of manipulatives and blocks and, and magnetic tiles and things that especially my five-year-old and my seven-year-old use a lot. So I feel like I can manage our current daily use homeschool out of two, and I'll go ahead and say three cabinets even though I'm not using a third. I feel like we can operate out of those, uh, which is gonna give me three to four more cabinets down here that I'm not even using. Look look at me with that extra storage space. So, so things are looking pretty good. Uh, the business cabinets, now again, they're not highly organized, but I do have like tripods and my battery chargers. Travis has an outlet for me up in one of those cabinets and a power strip plugged in. So I have multiple battery chargers plugged in and such. So that's working well so far. Of course, the six double pantry cabinets, getting used to how those work. Uh, you know, we refilled the bread the other day. So I think, 
I think it's all coming together. And so a couple more weeks, again, spices, things happening. Then we need to go couch shopping. I know those of you have worried about the acoustics in this room. I feel like once we get the couch there and the mama chair and uh, you know maybe an area rug on the floor over there, things, things will only, oh, again, it can only get better. And someone said, am I remembering correctly that your big fridge doesn't have a freezer? That is true. For 47 cubic feet, of refrigerator space in my kitchen, which is also very important, like rotating big 30 quart bowls of sauce or whatever it is I'm working on. Um, I traded not having a freezer in here. So originally I thought, well, we're gonna go right through this door and I'll have a laundry room slash pantry room freezer room right here, no big deal. But also I got to thinking, especially when I decided to move things downstairs, that you know, the freezer in the baby kitchen was just always jammed up with various odds and ends. And when we needed something from the freezer, it was never that freezer that we went to. We always went to one of the big freezers, which was out of that room to get what we needed. So we're used to not having what we need from the freezer in our kitchen. Um, how it's been so far is like in the morning, I'll go downstairs if we need something up here. Like the other day, I had gone down, I had set out several bags of the stuffed peppered soup. Uh, that was a slow cooker freezer meal. I set it out of one of the freezers in there into one of the refrigerators. And then I went down there the next day and I brought it up here and cooked it up. And I actually ended up just cooking it in the stove um, in about a 15 quart pot. And so we keep things in this fridge, like we keep a gallon of milk and a gallon of orange juice and a thing of apple juice, a thing of grape juice and my coffee creamer and eggs and we have a vegetable basket and a fruit basket, a lunch meat basket, a cheese basket. And so as those things get down to like one item for the uh, cheese and meat basket and such, or like the yogurt, you know, that whole thing is full. Well, there's gonna be times where we have to go and refill those and that's okay as well. But yeah, I'm not worried about not having 21 cubic feet or seven cubic feet or whatever. Uh, the other freezer amounts would be of storage in this room. I do have a lot of that. And so I just take a grocery bag downstairs to one of my freezers and get what I need or send a kid down there and say, okay. When I did chili the other day, I used all the beans I had up here and a lot of the tomato sauce. And I forget what it was. There's a few different, like some black beans, some beans I didn't have up here. So I just had a kid like get a grocery bag and go down and get some more beans and bring it back up. And that's how things work around here. Something else that's funny is like, especially this last week when we've done school. So we do have a large selection of popsicles in our freezer still from when we had 15 days of hand, foot and mouth disease. Yay, that's how we ended our summer. And so like we got back in from a nature walk and we were transitioning and doing other things. And I also try to be the fun mom. And so I was like, okay, we gotta go to the basement, but who's gonna go down and get a box of popsicles and bring it back up? And they brought the box of popsicles up. And then while I did reading, no one complained about eating popsicles. It was, it was again, it was okay. Heather says, what is your favorite new gadget in the big kitchen that you didn't have before? I'm going to say it's the extra sink. I am so in love, so in love with the double sink. I do see fire outside. The campfire is it going. So let me do a few more. Does your biggest bowl actually fit in a drawer? I, I think it did. I put it in a drawer just being funny, but again, that's not, other things would have to go in it. And I do have a big bowl situation with like, a 16 quart bowl or so with other bowls that are in it that are in the drawer. Um, but anyway, for that, I'm okay leaving it out. The pathway between the house and the new kitchen seems small. Will you be widening it? Yep, we're busting it all wide open. How are your new kitchen washcloths doing? I need some new ones and wanna know how yours are holding up. So I did get two new packs of kitchen towels, two new packs of washcloth. The three weeks they've been in use, they've been fantastic. They are linked in my Amazon store. Um, and you just go to amazon.com slash shop slash jamorel. It's always linked in the description, but anything I have bought for this kitchen or for this house, based on you, know, like if I don't have it linked, so many of you want to know, you know, these things, Where where's the chicken sisters picture? Where's the stained glass or where's, 
I don't know, anything. Where's your toaster? Someone asked me about the toasters the other day. So it's all linked, you just go there. And then so many of these are, again, the questions I have already answered. What are we doing with the baby kitchen? Where are the freezer, freezers and refrigerators going? And many people want to see inside the refrigerator, so that'll be in the last video. What are we doing with the old kitchen? Oh, this is a good one. Do you like your oven? Can you use the smaller oven? Can it fit a regular cookie sheet 9 by 13s? Let me show you that. So this is all like hopes and dreams, okay? So my baby oven in the baby kitchen could hold a 9 by 13. It could hold a cookie sheet. It's just my oven at the forest house could do like the full sheet pans and that was amazing. And this, this big one can do those. This does the big sheets. And I'm like, well, where do I have my cast iron? And then it's not, you know what? I, want, I was testing, okay. So there's my big oven. The other day when I put these away, I wanted to see if they would fit in the smaller oven and they do. So it looks smaller. It is about the size of my baby kitchen oven, but it's definitely usable. And we've already had times where, what did I have? I think I was doing like baked steak, don't knock it till you try it, baked steak in here. And I was doing um, roasted carrots. What was it? I don't think that was it. Hmm, no, it was chicken. I had two sheet pans full of chicken and I had roasted carrots and red potatoes in this oven. It was, it was amazing, life changing. Okay, so yes, in this one, both of my big lodge cast iron, beautiful 17 inch, hope of all hopes, dream of all dreams, both of these fit in here with no problem at all. I just have to turn the handles just right. There we go. And they come out, see, they're just lovely. So the ovens, they, they live, they're just wonderful. And the gas has been going well. I haven't used this griddle yet. This is a griddle I had got from Lodge back at the farmhouse. I don't recommend that you do this, but I would use this even on my flat top glass stove. It never broke it, but that is the risk that you take doing that. That was just the stove I had and I didn't have any other options, but I wanted a stove top griddle. And so I got this, I would do pancakes and such on it. So I was thinking, you know, I could even use it like on two burners like this. Um, so for this, the, it's this really neat, let me see if I can turn it on here for you. Nope, wrong one, we'll find it. Nope. Woo, there we go. So that's a big, a big, big burner there. Uh, so, maybe this does turn over. I was thinking, no, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, because the feet are on this way. Anyway, I saw on the Z-Line site, I can get the smooth tops ones of, ones of these, but they don't flip over like where this, you know. We could do double grilled cheese like that. Anyway, I probably will get the flat top version of that, but I thought also I might just try to get another one of these lodge ones to kind of have the, the griddle effect going on over here. And I also have my electric griddles um, as well when I want to do stuff on the stove top. So thank you all so much for hanging out with me this evening doing this Q&A, drinking the cup of tea. Now I will see, the Berenstain Bear Cup was put in the wrong sink, so I'm gonna put that one over here, probably because they saw it was so overflowing. That's okay, we're gonna go have our campfire, roast our hot dogs, visit with family, do some s'mores. <laughs> what we like to call s'mores around here. I think the kids are playing that. I don't know, it's not glow in the dark tag. There's a lot of fun happening outside, so I'm gonna go be with my family now, but thank you again for hanging out being with me for this big kitchen project. And when I get going through questions, if there's too many I missed, I'll try to do another Q&A video. But I'll talk with you in those comments below, and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye. So I'm trying to be done, and I, I have my whole load of stuff. I'm trying to go out to the campfire with everybody else. But I, kitchen, kitchen ideas, right? So see, oh, you're so good at leaning back with that tripod. See all that space around my sink window there and the birds and stuff? Sorry, the ice maker's gonna drop ice now. That's gonna be one of our new sounds. 
So, you know how I love the press metal backsplash? It was like my hopes and dreams and we had it done in the baby kitchen. And at least now I was like, oh, let's put that behind the trash can area. So, I just keep seeing that space and I just keep thinking, wouldn't that look pretty with that press metal around that window there? Like I look at that and look at that and I see it. Kind of like I saw that green hood and I had to, had to get that out of my head for right now. But yeah, whenever, yeah, so it, it's happened to me like 10 times now, okay, that I've been here and I've been like, I just really want something here. And it, I think, might be the press metal backsplash. But again, I'm also thinking, well, I'm thinking when we get that trim that goes to the ceiling, it's gonna help me visualize it a little more. So again, those little design things, they're still happening. Now out to the fire. Okay, goodbye for real this time. Thanks so much, friends, for watching today's Mega Mama Kitchen Q&A video. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Remember to go to HelloFresh.com, use code LFTABLE65 for 65% off plus free shipping.